everyone, welcome to a very special pandemic edition of the Knit Shift Podcast. Um, my name is Laura. It's been a really long time since I recorded, so welcome back if you used to watch the Knit Shift. Um, I stopped recording about a year and a half ago, and if this is your first visit, welcome and thank you for checking me out. Um, first and foremost, I want to say I hope everyone is doing well right now. This is a really weird time everywhere around the world. I hope you're safe. I hope you're healthy. I hope you're taking precautions. Um, I hope you're just doing well, period. You know, this is a really hard time and part of the reason I decided to record a new episode today is I think we're all looking for a little more human connection right now. Um, so I watched, I haven't been watching knitting podcasts, but I watched one a few days ago and it was just really nice and felt like the before times and was just a good little escape and it felt like a little hangout with a friend which many of us are not getting to do these days so um, I hope this can be that for you perhaps um, I don't know that I'll make this a habit um, I've heard from a lot of people over the past I don't I don't even know the last time I recorded it's been at least a year and a half I don't think it's been two years, but it's definitely been at least a year, probably 18 months. And people ask me occasionally, they'll say like, oh, are you going to record again someday? I really miss your podcast. And it makes me so happy that everyone enjoyed the knit shift so much when it was a more regular thing. But, um, but I'm still, I'm still in the Washington DC area. I'm still in Alexandria. Since I've recorded last, we rearranged a little. So my background is different from the last time I recorded. Um, we made a little home, we have a one bedroom apartment, uh, my boyfriend Josh and I, and we made a little home office for him ages ago, long before the pandemic. So where his little home office is in our living room is where I used to record. So I am on the couch. I have a very scientific setup with uh, a handheld blender that I have yet to take out of its box. That's what my phone is sitting on and the phone is propped up by a hand lotion bottle because I am nothing if not high tech. So um, anyway, already going off on tangents, it's like I never stopped recording. So um, I just wanted to record a little one-off episode during the pandemic and kind of give you guys a little update on what I've been up to and share some knitting and just have a little chat. So let's get to it. Um, like I said, I've, I'm still working in DC at a very large news organization, the same one I moved up here for um, almost three years ago. I moved up to Alexandria in August 2017. Still have my same job, love my job. It's a great job. Nothing has changed about my job in the pandemic except now I'm working from home and I'm very grateful to have the opportunity to work from home. Um, a lot of the news industry is in a lot of upheaval right now at a lot of, uh, for a, a lot of smaller papers and I'm very grateful that that has not been the case where I am right now. Um, it's just the whole reason I stopped recording is um, I love my job but it's very demanding and I don't have a ton of free time and if I'm recording, a, if I'm spending several hours a week working to edit and record a podcast and gather all my stuff and make notes, it takes away from the little free time I do have. So that said, our time, our, our concepts of time have changed during the pandemic a little bit. So I do have a little more time right now. I'm not commuting. Um, I'm not driving to work, not on the train. So I just thought, um, why not record an episode just for, for old time's sake and maybe I can... Maybe it'll be, maybe I'll do it every so often, but honestly, I think this is probably a one-off and we'll go from there. Only on YouTube, not on iTunes, um, just on YouTube. And I'll post it to my Instagram, which is at Laura Malski. So yeah, um, let's get to it. I have no finished objects to share with you, even though it's been a pandemic and lots of people have been knitting like crazy, I have not been one of them especially. I think I'm on my phone a lot looking at the news, which is not the best habit to have, even though I work in the news industry, I spend too much time on my phone and my off hours looking at news and I'm trying to get better about that. So, um, but I have been, in, I have been wanting to pick up knitting a little bit more lately. So now that we're kind of 
what we're week, week six, week seven into this, and um, I think we're all just getting a little more used to life these days. So I have two works in progress to share with you today. One is a baby sweater for a cousin who um, he and his wife are expecting a baby boy in August. I don't know if you can hear that, but that's the metro outside my front door. I have the screen door open for fresh air, and you might hear some beeping and rumbling of the train down the hill through the trees. Um, so I have this baby sweater I'm knitting for my cousin Zach and his wife Ashley, who are having a baby boy in August. And I'm following the Hang 10 pattern. I do not recall who the designer is, but it's a very simple stockinette pullover. And I am using the dark blue is, I think it's called Wandering Wool is the brand and it's a sock weight. This is all fingering weight yarn. The gray is left over from a cardigan I knit myself. And that is Miss Babs and I'm using it for the collar and um, some of the stripes. And the green, I don't even know. I think it's the green is something I got. It's a nice Kelly limey green. I got that from someone in like a sock yarn exchange when I was, friends were sending me sock yarn scraps for my blankets, which is, uh, I'm on my second blanket ever, still a work in progress. So I'm really enjoying this. This has been slow going. I haven't super wanted to knit on this, to be honest. I've been more distracted by the other thing I've been knitting, but I just started you can see I have some gray stitches on the needles. I just started the lower edging of the um, of the, the, the ribbing around the waist. So hopefully I can knock this out pretty soon. Um, this is my second time knitting the, hang ten, knitting the hang 10 pattern. I knit one for my old roommate who um, lives in California and that one flew off the needles. Um, they don't know if they're having a boy or a girl and um, it's, there's a photo of it on my Instagram if you check if want, if want to check it out. I can't edit this since I'm filming it directly on YouTube, but um, I knit my, for my old roommate a gray sweater with stripes, and that was really fun with green stripes because it's a California baby. So, so that is one thing I'm working on. And then the other thing that is taking most of my attention is a very, very pretty shawl um, that is the pattern Simple Lines by a, someone named Manel, M-A-A-N-E-L. And you can see I am, well, it's pretty big. I can't get this whole thing on camera, but, um, but I'm on the edging actually. I'm on the lace edging. Let me turn it upside down and you can see. It's a very simple, so it's a very simple pattern. It is stockinette and garter ridges and then there's eyelets every 25th row or thereabouts. And, um, and then there's a very simple lace edging. And I'm, I think I have eight rows left on the edging. And the yarn I'm using, it looks like hand spun, but it's not hand spun. It's by Feederbrook Farm, which is a Maryland company. Um, and the yarn is, I believe it's called Entropy DK, is the yarn. And it's merino, so it looks like it's hand spun, um, like spun on a wheel yarn, but it's not. And I'm, it's like, it says it's DK weight, but it feels more like fingering or sport. So this is what I have left of the cake. Hopefully I'm holding this in the right spot. I can see myself in the TV reflection. So, um, so it's really pretty and I'm really enjoying knitting with this. This is, like I said, it's the second cake. So, um, I had about 1200 yards of this and I'm not going to use all of this for the rest of the edging, which I was trying to maximize it, but my math was, was bad. So <laughs> I will have some left over, but maybe I'll use it for a baby hat down the road. So, um, it's a free pattern again, Simple Lines by Manel, and I highly recommend it if you are new to shawl knitting or just need something that's a little bit zen. Um, yeah, so those are my works in progress. I have not been knitting, I mean I have not been yarn shopping because it's just been not a priority to yarn shop. I had, this is, I mean we don't buy yarn thinking we're going to need to knit from our stash during a pandemic, but here we are. So my stash, which I'm looking at right now over there, my stash is doing great. Um, I did, the only thing I bought this year, yarn-wise, was I bought one skein of yarn at Fiberspace, which is my local yarn store here in Alexandria. And they were doing in-store shopping up until mid to late Mar mid March, I want to say, but it was by appointment. So you had to schedule an appointment if you wanted to come in the store. And I've been trying to support local businesses, so I thought I can do that. Um, so I did it, but I didn't super. I, I I love Fiberspace, but I felt like I shouldn't have gone in just because it was 
such a, it's, it is a stressful time and I feel a little guilty having gone to the shop and you know it could have put people at risk so but anyway I wanted to support them and I spent um, a decent amount of money on a skein of yarn and a bunch of like doodads and I bought needles and I bought some darning needle like knitting needles and darning needles and I think I bought a darning egg so it was just a lot of odds and ends but the skein of yarn that I got is a brand I have never bought before and it's Haverland Yarns so it's these everlasting self-striping sock yarn and it's um, a colorway I it, I would not normally buy but I've rather gravitated to and it is the Solderly sock base two ply 8020 BFL nylon superwash and the colorway is Padme like Padme Amidala from Star Wars so it's a really pretty um, pumpkin and goldenrod and pink and a lovely eggplant so very happy with that that will be socks down the road I have been knitting mostly in the before times when I would commute I would knit socks because those are just the most easy thing to knit on the train you know stuff them in my backpack stuff them in my purse that said I have not been doing a ton of knitting um, on the train even before all this um, I think I've knit one or two pairs this year maybe if that um, the socks I had in progress when this all began and I stopped taking the train are still socks in progress I don't think I've knit on them since I've been home I've really only knit on these two projects I showed you as well as my sock yarn blanket which if I do this again and I'm not saying I will I will show you a sock yarn blanket the next time I did bring over two other bits of stash to share with you because they can um, tell you some other things that I've been up to lately so in November I took a trip to Austin Texas with my dad um, about a decade ago, my mom and I had a mother-daughter trip to Missouri, and we went to the Laura Ingalls Wilder home in, um, I can't think of the town right now, but southwest Missouri, near Springfield, um, and Rocky Ridge Farm is where Laura Ingalls Wilder, the writer, lived with her husband until her waning days, and it was the trip of a lifetime for us, and it was amazing, because I'm named for her, she's Laura Elizabeth, I'm Laura Elizabeth. And um, it was wonderful. So we had this great mother-daughter trip. And But my dad and I have not had that kind of trip. My dad and my brother had a trip to Chicago years ago, um, but we kind of needed to do the switch off where I go somewhere with my dad and my brother goes somewhere with my mom for like a, a fun time. So um, I was in Austin, I think I was in Austin in February 2019 with Josh, my boyfriend. And I was like, you know, Austin has so much live music. There's barbecue. My dad loves music. He loves barbecue. He loves blues. Like, why don't my dad and I come to Austin? So we, we planned it in February 2019 to go. We went Veterans Day weekend in November, so like nine months down the road. And um, we had no real plans. We had um, an Airbnb, um, which was great. And we ended up getting to see Stevie Ray Vaughan's brother, Jimmy Vaughn, play a show. And he doesn't always play in Austin all the time, so um, it was a real treat to see him. We saw, we went to the Continental Club, which is like a longtime club. We went to multiple barbecue places. We did like a barbecue tour out in Lockhart, Texas, which has like three or four really good barbecue places. And it was just like the most amazing time. It was such a fun weekend. Um, and it, it was just a blast. You know, we went to see the Stevie Ray Vaughan statue since, again, my dad's a big blues fan, loves Stevie Ray Vaughan. And, um, of course there was a visit at the very end of the trip I think it was on our way to the airport even I think we went to I know we went to Hill Country Weavers and he bought some yarn for my mom and he treated me to some yarn which was very sweet so I didn't pull up both skeins he bought me um, a skein of La Bienna May which I'm so excited to knit with it's a beautiful skein of DK weight maybe I'll remember if I do it again to bring it over but I grabbed this because it's a very Austin-y yarn um, this is Amanda Hope yarn and it's um, an 8515 wool nylon blend and the colorway is Austin-esque and it's gray and there's these lovely pukey green speckles and there's tan speckles but there's also these lovely mauve and purple and blue and I just think this was really fun and I just love buying yarn that is local to a place so I had to have that come home with me so that's a treat I got in November and then the other thing I brought over is something really fun my friends and I did in uh, December. So I have some knitting friends back home. I have lots of knitting friends back home, um, back home. I still think of Norfolk and Virginia Beach where I lived for 12 years as home. 
but it's not home. This is home. You can have multiple homes, right? Pittsburgh's also my home. I'm from there. So, um, I, I, my friends and I, two of my friends from Virginia Beach and a friend in Nashville, um, we text regularly. We did a little advent swap for Christmas. So we each sent, three of us are knitting more than the fourth. So the fourth person got goodies and an, uh, I think an Amazon gift card. The other three of us sent each other minis. So we each sent the other person 12 minis. So everyone had 24 minis. And then I sent a skein of yarn to Lennis. Lennis sent a skein of yarn to Casey. Casey sent a, a skein of yarn to me. So, um, so that, so at the end on Christmas day, you had a full skein of yarn to open up. So I got this lovely stranded dye works BFL nylon from Casey, who just really hit it out of the park for me. And it's an 80, 20 BFL nylon colorway is naive watercolor, not native watercolor, but naive, but this, this hits all my, all the things I like the purples and the blues and the greens. So this will probably be socks or like a cow, lacy cow. We'll see. So I really love that. So that's literally been sitting on my nightstand for like since Christmas time because I just like it and it's nice to have a pretty skinny yarn there. Um, and finally, I brought over a skein of a fiber so I could talk a little bit about spinning. Um, I'm not spinning much, so there's not a lot to say about spinning. But um, for the past year or so, year and a half since I stopped recording this podcast, um, I still had a monthly club going for Hello Yarn, whose fiber is amazing, and I also belonged to the Nest Fiber Club. That was my Christmas gift from Josh, um, Christmas 2018. So I did that for like a year plus, but I finally said, okay, I really need this to stop because my spinning stash is like taking over. It's like a parasite on my stash of yarn and it's like taking over all the cubbies. But I brought over just one, um, one bag of fiber to show you. So this is the Nest Club from July of last year and this is Polworth and the color is Perseus and I'm not going to take it out of the bag, but it's just lovely purples and browns. I love the contrast in there. So I thought you guys might like to see it. But still have my wheel, just I don't think I've spun since Tour de Fleece in July. Would love to spin more. I think it would probably be really good stress relief right now, but I just haven't been motivated. Maybe once I finish my shawl. Um, also that shawl I'm knitting, the, like I've been f having trouble focusing on stockinette and yet this very simple lace on that shawl edge is making me wanna, like that's making me wanna come back and, and knit some more. So I'm thinking I might, um, I'm thinking about trying like a, starting a lace shawl after this, like a simple lace shawl. So we'll see. It's been a while since I knit one of those. So that's it for the knitting content. And the last thing I think I'll talk about today is I've been doing some baking. I got a request or two to talk about baking today. Um, yes, I am a sheep and I jumped on the sourdough starter train when the pandemic began. I had a halfway decent amount of flour. Um, one of my friends in my neighborhood gave me some flour because she's a longtime baker. Um, she gave me yeast too. So before I was ready to bake with just my starter, I used some yeast and made some bread. So if you're unfamiliar, a sourdough starter is when you combine flour and water and you leave it on your counter and you feed it, you give it more flour and water and it grows and it develops yeast. It captures yeasts from what's in the air around you. There's wild yeast in the air around us and it eventually becomes potent enough to write to rise to make bread rise on its own you don't need like commercial yeast the stuff in packets and all that so it takes some time to develop a starter um i followed the king arthur and so as you're you don't just keep feeding and it's not like it grows and grows and grows you throw away some or you discard some of it and use it in recipes as you go so like if your starter weighs 300 grams, you might throw, you might get rid of half of it and then you feed it because you're trying to give, give it a chance to grow and develop and feed on the new stuff you're adding. So that's like the, the long and the short, but that's the really short version of sourdough starter. Um, so I follow the King Arthur recipe on how to make a starter. So if you're interested in making your own starter, I recommend doing that. Um, it can be as big or as little, like if you only have a little, if you don't have a ton of flour, you could do a tiny starter and just add a little, a little bit of flour, a little bit of water to get it going. You don't need to have a big one. So, um, that's something to keep in mind if flour is still in short supply where you are. 
Um, so I started mine in mid-March, I want to say, maybe late March, and a lot of the recipes, including King Arthur, say it can take five to seven days to get your starter ready, and like you'll know it's ready to bake with when it like you feed it and then it doubles in size, like it's just enormous. And it's, ex I mean, it's, it's bubbly before that, but it's extra bubbly once it's really ready to bake with, but you, you feed it and then it doubles in size and then it kind of falls back down and then it's ready to feed and yada yada. So, um, mine took 17, one seven days to be ready to bake with. I was almost ready to throw in the towel, to be honest. Um, I, I just wasn't sure it was going to happen. And then it was like overnight. It just happened. Like I came out, I think after feeding it like 10 PM the night before, and it was still quite elevated with like six in the morning. And I was like, Oh my God, it happened. It happened. And like, I think I woke up Josh about it because I was so excited. Um, so yeah. So it was finally ready to bake with, and since then I have baked, I don't know how many loaves, six, seven, eight, something like that. Um, I have been following King Arthur recipes mostly. Um, again, their website is a great resource if you want to get into baking bread with or without a just a sourdough starter, or if you want to use yeast, it's a great resource, so I highly recommend checking it out. Um, I even started an Instagram account just for bread baking. So a lot of people name their sourdough starters. I named mine Mona because it's a nice name and Mona rhymes with Corona and like I kind of associate starting the bread with the coronavirus. So Mona the coronavirus starter is her name. So my Instagram account is at Mona Sourdough. So you can follow me there if you like. Still posting on my other account, but Mona Sourdough is where most of my bread stuff is happening. So it's been really good. Um, you can get as crazy about bread or as not crazy about bread as you want to. Like there's all sorts of philosophies about how much hydration the dough needs or how much of a rise time or do you just rise it on the counter or do you put it in the fridge overnight and I'm way too new to know what's best. But, um, but I'm making tasty bread and I'm following the King Arthur naturally leavened sourdough recipe um, most of the time. It's not a very, you don't have to put it in the fridge overnight. It's like seven hours start to finish. It makes a rather fluffy bread for me. Um, but the main thing to remember is that bread is really finicky and everyone has a different um, experience or, you know, it, it's just so many factors go into it. So who's to say what makes bread turn out the way it does? It's a crapshoot, but I am baking in a Dutch oven, which I think helps. Um, so that is my one recommendation beyond using King Arthur's resources. So with that, I think that's about all I have to share today. Um, again, oh, oh, and I'll let you know, Gracie just walked by, my dog Gracie, if you've been watching for a long time. Um, Gracie will, God willing, <laughs> Gracie will be 15 in July. Um, she's doing great. She's getting deafer. Um, she doesn't want to walk for long, super long walks as much as she used to, but that's to be expected. Um, but she's just a happy-go-lucky pup and um, still hates the mailman and UPS trucks. And, um, yeah, and I still, I'm still, my niece is three now, if you can believe it. I did go to Ohio to see her at the very beginning of March, right before things got crazy with the pandemic. I went up for her birthday, which was a lovely trip to see my parents and my brother and my sister-in-law and my niece, Olivia, who is just amazing. So I'm good. I'm okay. I hope you are too. It's, it's a lot of emotions and a roller coaster of life right now um, for a lot of people. I feel very fortunate um, with how with how everything is for me personally, and I can only hope that you're doing well, uh, well too, and staying safe and healthy. And I'm putting all the good vibes out there in the universe for people. So, um, without getting too woo woo about it, thank you for watching. Again, I don't know if I'll do this sometime soon um, down the road, but we'll see. But thank you for watching. Please drop me a note or. Um, you know, shoot me a message on Instagram if you liked it, and, um, you know, it always, it's nice to hear from people who really loved the, the podcast back in the day, and um, I really appreciate it. It, really, it, like, means so much more than you know, so thank you very much for all your feedback. 